Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series on the Roland SP404 Mark II, where I try and cover a topic in about five minutes. This one might be a little bit longer, only because it's a pretty long comment, and I want to respond to it as best as possible, but uh, Tips and Tricks writes in and says that this series has been really helpful so far in deciding if the 404 is the next thing for my hardware setup. And just as a note, I, I just want to make sure it's clear, because I know sometimes it looks like I'm doing very twiddly things, but I do. Ha this channel's been around long enough that people ask very specific questions and it's not always straightforward on how to do certain things with the sp404 mark ii i never actually thought that i'd be making sp404 mark ii videos for what's going on three years now i know it's not quite as consistent i'm bringing in some other instruments but uh don't take any of my newest sp404 mark ii videos as this device is super difficult to use it is very easy to do some specific things. But let's get into the rest of your comment here, and I'll keep responding in line, basically. Now you say, I'm a bit worried the 404 will make it overly complicated and get in the way of my creative workflow, and seeing you tweaking stuff is exactly why I'm worried about that. And I, I would just say, the it depends on what you want to use this 404 Mark II for. For me, I would say it's kind of a Swiss Army knife. It's really good as a audio interface with the USB-C, it just works great and will interface with a computer, tablet, or phone for most of them quite well. Uh, it There's other devices like the OP-1 field and other things that it just will work well, very well with and allow you to quickly sample, send things back and forth and just iterate over things. But by and large, the two things I would say this is the best device for, for a lot of folks is recording samples. Recording is very fast, whether you want to do like a few like half a second or shorter or you want to go up to 16 minutes like you can just hit record tap a pad and it is just armed and recording and away you go so if you're looking for something that's just got that kind of flexibility for time it's great similarly for effects i would say it's like a i don't think it has the best effects but i think it has the effects with the best tuning for the knobs so if you're looking for a lot of flexibility in effects you're probably wanting a different device. But if you want something that's got effects that are very impactful, sound great, pretty much no matter how you use them or will be like very obvious that you're using them, the SP404 Mark II is great for that. It's very good for taking like that samples content or input that you have coming in and doing some really cool stuff with it. And the other thing that I just always have said and love is no matter what, I think the SP404 Mark II, if you have nothing else to use it for, just the skip back alone as a feature will allow you to sit there and just noodle with whatever musical instrument or device you want. And you just know that if, as long as you hit the mark button, you can go back in and grab whatever the last, what is it, 40 or 45 seconds of content is, that it can be very powerful and allow you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Or you'd just sit there and have to, again, you'd be recording for 16 minutes and be like, oh my gosh, like I have so much content I gotta go dig through. Where usually, at least for me and myself, uh, I find that it is very frequently very short snippets of time where I'm like, oh, that was awesome and I want to save it so that I can then go work with it some more. It's usually not like the the set the session where you've just recorded for two hours. And I don't personally when I have a two hour recording, I'm not looking forward to scrubbing through that to go find where something sounds awesome. And it's not always easy to just mark that. Um let's keep going though. Uh Right, you say right now I'm not using samples in my DALA setup apart, apart from one shot drums, and I create my sounds live with instruments, FX, in real time, but I do feel that leaves some creative options out for me. Um, I think you'll find that the SP404 Mark II as a FX box in that scenario is great. It's also actually like with resampling, you can cr I keep sculpting and molding sounds over time with it. The thing that I think you'll struggle with with the SP404 Mark II though, is it's not really meant to be a live recording device. You can totally do it and you'd need to make sure you understand a couple of the workflows, but if you're playing a pattern or a sample on it and then you wanna record something, it doesn't, you, you kind of interrupt that playing. Uh, there's some ways you can kind of sort of hide it, but I mean, by and large, if you're really trying to record something that is going on i would say you might be better off having this be like in your chain where you have the, again you have the skip back you can go grab something from the skip back go 
process it through while you're queuing it. And then you could then load it up and have something really cool that you could be like, I had that moment and it's gone usually, but now I had that moment while I was playing something live and I can grab that piece and then bring it back in as it makes sense. Um, so you say your plan is to buy a 404 when you can create experimental weird loops by recording various things onto it and create loops, probably resampled patterns that you can later use in hardware jams. And I would say, yeah, the 404 Mark II is really perfect for that. You can take, create a pattern and then resample it as a sample and then uh, on your pad and then go kind of keep working it. Uh, pretty quick workflow for that. I don't, again, I don't know that I would try and do that in a live scenario because it's going to cause you some different problems. But if you're doing the, all of this offline, which is what it sounds like you're indicating, then yeah, a great device for that. And it's just something you can kind of throw in a backpack, go work on it and keep kind of moving things forward as you're working through it with the looper as well. I would say you can do some really cool things because then you could also be playing having it record up to depending on how long your what your bpm is but you could probably get like a two or four bar loop under most circumstances where you could be playing live and you just want to kind of drop something out let the loop go and then you can fade it in and out which can be really powerful and like pretty cool to do in a live uh, setting and environment as well uh, let's see you also say i'm not sure if the 404 is the best option mainly because it seems like integrating into a larger setup is not what it was designed for and i'm hesitant because of the many 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 shortcuts you'll have to remember um i would say first of all if uh it, it I, I i said like this thing's like a swiss army knife it will fit into just about any setting or scenario like you can find a use for it whether it's effects playing samples or functioning as like a kind of poor man's mixer. I mean, you've got your line in, you got your USB, USB C in and you got your mic and guitar inputs. You can, it's not the best mixer in the world cause you don't have any adjustments for the levels and gain setting. You have to do that on your other devices except for your mic and guitar in, but it can, it, it can be something that you can kind of use depending on how you want or need it. Given the uh, shortcuts, uh, I mean, that's why I put this, silly little quick reference together you can go download it for free off patreon i've got a link in my comment in the comments i don't know you can just download it for free print it out and i've got a few different format formatted versions of it so that'll it, it'll i've tried to go through and organize things i'm not going to dig into it too much but you know if you're chopping or want to be in chromatic mode or utility pattern editing whatever i've tried to take what i found the hardest things to remember that or that just aren't that consistent and put it down and document it in it just so I can like have in my back pocket whenever I'm like, what the heck am I doing? I can't remember all of these things either, even though they, they tend to be sticky, but I don't know. It can be a little bit of a problem. Let's see. Uh, you also say I don't have plans on using its internal sequencer and said, I only want to sequence pads samples for my 707. It works great with a external sequencer for the SP 404 Mark II, especially if you're not really, BPM sync usually will work fine, but if you have things that you're playing from the 707 for uh, samples using its BPM, you can send a sync signal out. The SP404 Mark II will work with it. You don't, if you're not going to be using the internal patterns uh, and, and you're just recording samples that are at a set BPM, I see no problem with that. You just basically want to know that you have two options for, you've got um, under utility, if you go to system and over to uh, MIDI here, you have two modes. You've got MIDI mode A, which each bank gets its own MIDI channel, or you've got MIDI mode B, where banks A through E and F through J get their own unique MIDI channel. So it just ends up being two MIDI channels instead of uh, instead of ten, and it can make it easier to work with for certain sequencers because I know some. Uh, you'll basically keep using a track up for every bank that you use. But I, from given what it sounds like you're saying, uh, you should be able to send out MIDI notes, no problem from the 707, and have the SP404 Mark II trigger those notes in whatever fashion that you like. Um, you say, I feel like I won't have more than three or four loops per jam, one per section, so no bank changes, et cetera, needed. Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, it sounds like to me something that... Uh, has a lot of potential for you, even if it's maybe not the completely right device. Uh, I mean, you're basically getting a looper, you're getting a 
way a quick sampler you're getting the patterns you're getting effects so if you're if you it sounds like you don't value the sequencer or pattern mode which is completely fine but i still think you'll find value in the ability to quickly record things i think you'll find some value in the looper i do think you'll find value in the effects so yeah i mean check the used market and see how it looks or works for you and if not obviously i mean i'll have no hard feelings if it doesn't work for you um, feel for, I have plenty of people that write it and like, Hey, I tried it. Thanks for the videos. And I will see you later. <laughs> not playing with it anymore, but, um, I mean, I'm not religious about it or anything. And I think it's a great device. I, I don't know that it's for everybody, but yeah, I, I feel like it, it sounds like it has enough to offer you that maybe it's worth checking out. And if you have more questions, feel free to drop them in comments, send an email or whatever. I'm happy to do my best to try and answer you and everybody else out there. So everyone, thanks for stopping by. Keep making music. Keep having fun. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. And peace.